Break, baby. It is the news reporting live from your studios in Hollywood, California. I'm like, I'm just warming up for when we, when we make it. Puff, drop the check, Mo. Go, you know, go and let a nigga get on Revolt TV, man. Revolt TV. Yeah. Hey, man, check drop this out. Check, I Mo. know of two shows on Revolt. Well, three, I guess. Breakfast Club and then the Joe Budden show and then the other Joe Budden show. Yeah, state state of the culture or some shit. Yeah, I watched like one or two episodes of that and was like, if this the cast they're gonna have, I'm not gonna be watching this show. So I stopped watching it. Oh, I'll be watching it. That's cool. Now I have you as a resource yeah, for information for that show because I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I be checking them out. Yeah, I'll be checking them out. I'm petty, dog. Uh, the, the one little I like, dude, uh, you know, the little joke. I like, dude, what's his name? I like Remy. I like Remy's point of view on the yeah, show. Yeah, I do too. If it was just Joe and Remy. I'd watch it, but it's not. It's yeah. like it's the little emotional millennial and the emotional millennial plus two people I guess supposed to be like the old voices in in the group. I don't like that emotional millennial shit. Hey man, people have emotions and they care about them. Well, guess what? Emotion makes. I would like to. Uh, yeah, man, but fuck state of the culture and all of that. that Joe Budden, Remy, and the two emotions. I would like to preview my shirt today. Okay. Like for all my racist white friends. You know what? That shirt is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it looks like something that should be on a billboard. Yeah. For all of my racist white friends, hello. I would like to say hello. Goodbye. Yeah. And uh, y'all can get these hands. Both of them. Both. And for Yeah. Boop. Yeah. And Anderson for style. Silver. On you. Yeah, and it's a silver style. Yeah, I put my put my middle toe in your nose. Not straight, you can catch it. Yeah. Ball of the hey, Rizza, uh, I don't like your hair on this bitch. No, so we gonna get up out of that. Yeah, uh, we moving on right now. Basically, if you didn't know, the Wu Tang Clan is coming to Omaha August second, two thousand and nineteen. Yes, they are. Yes, the they are. They won't be in the pit. <laughs> let's, let's raise the roof for that. Yeah, we doing old school '90s shit now. Raise the roof, nigga. Yeah, yeah, that's what we about. That's what we about. That ain't the story though. That ain't the news. Uh. Oh shit! Raise the roof, yeah, nigga. Like, we were stupid for that. Yeah, man. It was a lot of shit we were stupid for. We were stupid for raising the fucking roof. Roof, 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 roof. Shout out to Arsenio, bro. The nigga with the longest fingers in the history of fingers. Hey, man, he couldn't stop pointing them damn fingers. Yeah, man. man. Hey. Kid and Harry Wayans did a great Arsenio Hall impression. Yeah, he does the best one ever. The best one ever, ever you nigga. If you've never seen it. Yeah. Is the news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga said, like, you know what? Yeah, let me pull this up for y'all. <laughs> Just so y'all our last video was blocked in 12 countries. Yeah, was, man. A little pussy we was talking about clones. Yeah, we was talking about Donald Trump and Gucci yeah. Mane. Yeah. Guess what? We was I ain't talking about... stop talking about clones. Guess what? Guess what? Because <laughs> uh, Arsenio Hall got Arsenio Hall got clones. It's the Arsenio Hall Show. <laughs> starring Arsenio Hall. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my nigga though. Let my nigga Arsenio come up out here. Yeah. Arsenio. In the 90s and the shit. <laughs> yeah, the 90s and the shit. Yeah, man, the ever and you know what, man? We will never get comedy like that ever yeah. again because, you know, back then, man, you know, they was, you know, they was man, making like the men on film sketch. Hilarious. That would not go they, in they today's sensitive. Now. In today's sensitive world, they would they wouldn't be able to do man on film because they're making fun of gay people, and the LGBTQRSTV community would be upset 
and get all sensitive in, in their feelings all because it's a nigga. Be yeah, because it's a nigga with a tiny hat on acting like one of them. Being funny about it. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much, you know. Yeah, well, that's, um, the, that's the only reason I don't like gay people. They're too fucking sensitive. Too sensitive, man, but what'd you expect? Y'all, you know, yeah, y'all are taking whole dicks up the ass and you niggas are sensitive. Stop it, man. Anyway, moving forward, Atlanta Black Star, one of the best newspapers the world has ever created. Yeah, that, that uh, exists on the internet. Yeah. Uh, this story Full of nothing but truths. Unadulterated truths. Unadulterated, <laughs> uh, most of the time, all the time, often. So yeah. Often. They be lying. <laughs> they be lying. <laughs> but yeah, man, they uh, dropped a story about the Wu-Tang Clan, you know. Yeah, man. And, um, Basically, this story uh, says that in 2012, it was revealed that the FBI had been monitoring the Klan from 99, shout out to 99, to 2004. Hey, man, great year. Great year, brother. Now, they didn't learn this until after a group member, old dirty bastard, a.k.a. AKA Russell Jones. That's not mm-hmm. the I'll give you that off the top. One of my favorite Wu-Tang Klan members yeah, of if all. Not, if not my favorite. Yeah, if not my favorite. If not my favorite, but I like the Jizza and the Rizza and the old Dirty Bizza and, you know, Inspector Deck. And we ain't gonna yeah, go yeah. I'm but, a ghost uh, face guy. Basically, they didn't know this until the FBI file on him was unsealed. Mm. Now, mm-hmm. as it states in this first paragraph, when the FBI file on old Dirty Bastard, a.k.a. Russell Jones, was unsealed, it come to find out the whole clan was being investigated. But... The lead was the fact they was investigating ODB. In nearly a hundred pages, it details the feds believe the Wu was a criminal enterprise that was involved in murder, drug dealing, illegal gun selling, weapons possession, money laundering, along with other crimes. The FBI worked with the U.S. Attorney's Office for a Southern District of New York and Justice Department to investigate the group and build a case. Now, the article on the, the Black Star pretty much ends right after this tweet picture you see. This tweet is of Ghostface Killer and Method Man with the former FBI director James Comey during a taping of The Late Show with Stephen Colbert last April. Comey is the same person who led an investigation to see if Trump colluded with Russia to affect the election until Trump fired him in May of 2017. All right. So this article didn't have a lot of information in regards to the investigation part of the Wu-Tang. It just talked about they mm-hmm. investigated and they back out here and they touring and they doing their thing. And they also talked about the album Once Upon a Time in Shaolin. It was never released to the public. It was sold at auction for $2 million by Martin Scarelli, former hedge fund manager who's serving seven years in the federal penitentiaries for fraud. The album was seized by the U.S. government after Scarelli was indicted. RZA said he has no idea where the album is. The album has a life of his own, quote, he states. Who knows where it's at? It might end up on the moon. But if it knocks at my door, I'll let it in, unquote. So, we go to Okay, uh, RZA, you're talking about an album in third person. Exactly. But okay. That he All made. right. So, I get it. When I saw that article, I'm like, well, the article obviously couldn't have been them revealing the fact that Wu-Tang was being investigated because back in 2016, there's an article saying the same thing. But it says something that you probably won't catch on the black news. It's a closer look at the FBI's Wu-Tang. It's by Vice News. Vice News, you go to their website. Let's see what's important to Vice. Well, they obviously want you to watch the videos and politics, and then LGBTQ, Drugs, Opinion, Photos, Magazine. That's their topics, but we're going to take a closer look at the music issue by Jason Leopold. Close look at the Wu-Tang Files. Now, I'm going to go through the files quickly, then I'm going to go to these videos of ODB, then we're going to come back to the files after we hear what ODB got to say. So I'm not going to go through this beginning part. Because basically what the what the beginning part is trying to make it seem as if it's not racist. They use all these paragraphs to basically say that even though they investigate Wu Tang, they also investigate white groups such as the Doors, the Beatles, the Grateful Dead. They even launched a separate investigation into the song Louie Louie 
If you know, remember that song back in the day, Louie, 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 Louie. They thought them dudes were talking about they dangling. And because uh, they said they didn't understand the lyrics. They deemed the lyrics unintelligible and thought they violated obscenity laws way back then. So basically, showing you this tie of the feds, finding reason to investigate you, they're going to do it. Boom. So Shout out to the feds, man. Shout, Shout out, out to the feds. Because if they want you, they can hum it. And they don't play it. Yeah. They don't. Facts. So the FBI and the NYPD was investigating Wu Tang between ninety nine and two thousand four, the year of ODB's death. In two thousand twelve, in response to a Freedom of Information Act request, the FBI released a ninety five page file on ODB and the quote WTC, which is how the agency referred to the group. If you don't know, that's Wu Tang Clan. The inflammatory allegations leveled in the file drug dealing, gang ties, murder, etc. have been written about in the past, but little attention has been given to the scope of the FBI investigation. So, why would the FBI be so pushed to spend money and resources to investigate a rap group? Primarily, the old dirty bastard, who if you don't know, he only released two albums, right? Yeah. And he was obviously on most of the Wu Tang projects, if not all of them, even other Wu Tang members' projects, which they all did. But primarily as an artist, he dropped two albums. So let's listen to ODB. Uh, this first interview, a lot of people have seen it, it's from 97. It's ODB and Method Man speaking with. Let's see, I'm trying to remember who this said they were speaking with. But basically, these interviewers are not from America, they sound German. Or from that particular type of Austria type of area. And they're just asking him about the group. What's the plans for the group? If you didn't know, 97, I believe the year Triumph came out. 97 or 98. So this is the, the push to the double disc. Wu Tang Forever. And let's. Hold on. I just want to make sure the volume on this joint is 100, 100. Let's get it. Old Dirty Bastard, interview 1997. Now I must, um, you know, shit. It's a boy. I say, um, like, you know, the clan's been the clan, you know what I mean? You know, all this rap music, man, it's just rap music, man. I ain't really tied up into the rap music. I'm t I got m more better things to talk about. He's an entertainer, you know, dirty. He don't, he don't just limit himself to rhyming, man. He can do it all, baby, sing. Oh, you gotta do a little stage, choppy on you know? It's coming through choppy. It's really low. I must say, okay. and it's an old ass interview. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Some clarity on what he was saying, and we'll definitely run this back. They've been asking him a lot of rap questions. This this video starts nine minutes into this interview. If you see, it goes back quite a bit. But nine minutes in, basically, ODB says, "Listen, all the rap shit cool. I rap and everything, but I got a lot of plans. I'm a lot more than just a rapper." Now, if you know the history of rap when it comes to rappers in the media, there weren't a lot of rappers that did not play the game. They usually stayed into their character and they persona in interviews, primarily throughout history. The biggest artists, you never seen them out of character and break character. Wu Tang was different. To give him knowledge yourself, but he'll know. He'll know what he's dealing with and how much, and, you know, shit. It's a boy. I say, um, like, you know, the clan's been the clan, you know what I mean? You know, all this rap music, man, it's just rap music, man. I ain't really tied up into the rap music. I'm t I got m more better things to talk about. He's an entertainer, you know, dirty. He don't, he don't just limit himself to rhyming, man. Mm -hmm. He can do it all, baby, sing. Oh, you got to see his stage performance, you know? Oh, yeah. Something to behold. It's like he uplift the whole clan at times, you know? Now, if you notice, for real... When he said what he said, he wasn't speaking in the framework of, yo, I do more than rap. I can sing, dance, act. That's how meth framed it. What Dirty said was the clan going to be the clan. This rap shit is what it is, but I got more bigger plans than that. When he was done, that's when meth goes into, yeah, y'all should see his stage performance. Y'all should hear him sing. Woo, woo, woo. That's not what Dirty's talking about, though. Can you dig it? 
<laughs> I love that shit. You did that shit that night. Mm. Hey, y'all, uh, you're incredible, man. In what way do you think that, that the clan has, has changed hip hop? Now, the interviewer asked, in which way do you think the clan has changed hip hop? Um, in every way. I mean, it's obvious, man. What? Only built for Cuban links, introduced the Wu Gambinos. You know, everybody had an AKA this, AKA that. After that, what did you see? Everybody and their mother had an AKA. AKA Frank Castle and all this other shit, you know? And yeah, cream, we, 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 cream we, we, alone. We, we bring the rain to the motherfucking earth. That's all. Mm. We, we, um, the air was polluted and we um, unpolluted the air for a moment. So while we're here, the air will be unpolluted. If you didn't catch what he said, Meth was on some. Oh, how we changed rap? Well, before we came along, nobody had an AKA. They wasn't little, little such and such AKA this. That was what Meth come up with. ODB is like, mm -hmm. listen, before we came along, the airwaves was polluted. And for this little minute, we here, the airwaves are not going to be polluted. Meaning we're going to teach you something through this. Go back to the same album that they're pushing. RZA said in one of the tracks, Listen, you don't even need to go to summer school. Just throw on the Wu-Tang double disc. You get all the knowledge you need, shorty. But Meth was, has always been the one pushing the Hollywood angle with Wu-Tang. Doing the acting, doing all this shit, niggas. It's like, man, we just here to bring the knowledge. They brought 5% Nation, bigger than anybody, to the world as rappers. And, and, and I mean, it will be polluted, but we will keep raining. Period. Right, you guys better recognize where the originality come from and get your own shit. We say that on every album too. Be original. That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Be original. You know, it's like that's why we'll throw little things out there like that just to see if they catch on to it and how many people will catch on to it so people can see it. But it's like sometimes I start to think like the hip hop audience ain't that intelligent sometimes, you know, where they don't pick up on it because they let the the corniest shit get the most airplay. You know what I mean? The, the the most unconscious shit get the most airplay. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? the government. Yeah, and then... Boom. Now, if you notice, Dirty ain't really dismissive to what Meth been saying, but he ain't really giving what Meth been saying a lot of energy. Meth blaming the listener <coughs> for the fact that it's so much nonsense music out there. Yo, I think the hip-hop community sometimes ain't that intelligent when we be coming with this and they don't be picking it up. Dirty like, nah, that ain't it. Shit, get the most airplay, you know what I mean? The 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 most unconscious shit, get the most airplay. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? the government. Yeah, and then run up on me talking about keep it real. Don't run up on me say keep it real if you ain't supporting the real. The you know what I'm saying? Bottom line. The government brainwash our people with the mind control theory. That's what they do. So they make sure our people like it. They keep playing that same song. The same song keep playing, you, you start to like it. You start to get cloned with it. You start to get cloned with it. So then, clone with it. Before the clone exists, then it just takes over. It takes over the human body. It takes over the spirit. It takes over the soul. And therefore, so this one more time to what Dirty said. Oh, you got a call? Cause I done lost you there for a second. Hey, it's all right. I'm back. Same song. No, I'm back. But again, Meth putting it on the listener and Dirty telling you, no, it's the plan and it's the program. They know that yeah. if they keep repeating this cycle, eventually this cycle going to have this fucking mindset change. This hey, bring my visuals back up. For me. You up? I'm talking about I can't see. Oh, you can't see what I got going on the screen? Yeah, that's why I said bring my visuals. Okay. Because I'm gonna have to start the whole thing over, I guess. No, nah, you know, we can rap. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about the whole. Uh, oh, okay. Nah, I ain't about to go through all that. Everybody can just see how this thing is done. Do it themselves. I mean, damn, it's not that hard. There we go. There we go. It's number Windows and screencast programs. Yeah, right? this is all. This is it. <laughs> this going, you know? Windows and screencast programs. Back to it, but dirty keeping it real like yeah we can't keep blaming the listener man when they're programmed and they're gonna have what's out there accessible to them yeah so, flat out for this time we gonna rain and put out what we can put out this character <laughs> that but they know that they're creating a clone and once the clone takes over it's over 
Watch his shit, get the most airplay. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? the government. Yo, and then run up on me talking about keep it real. Don't run up on me say keep it real if you ain't supporting the real. The you know what I'm saying? Bottom line. The government brainwash our people with the mind control theory. That's what they do. So they make sure our people Myth, like it. They keep, playing keep his face song. down. Same song, dirty program. Yeah. When dirty sitting there, yeah. shit, my nigga, keep his face down. He ain't, he ain't looking at the camera. And I'm not gonna call him F. Boule, bro. But you gotta look at certain people. If you don't get in through the colleges, but you end up in the circles of people who making the paper, who went to college, and who want to be close to them street niggas and this, that, and the other. They only bring you in one or two ways, dude. It's either through them boardrooms or through parties. It ain't like you having these huge elaborate ass meetings. Nah, they just get familiar with you and bring you in. And you know, put your head down, man. Don't speak with your head up with confidence. Because he comments, he says, yeah, it's programmed. But he ain't acknowledged it. Right. You start to get cloned face. with it. So then for the clone exists, then it just takes over. It takes over the human body. It takes over the spirit. It takes over the soul. And therefore, behold, that's what you got. That's why Dirty is here for. Dirty here just to keep it dirty. Dirty, 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 where we all come from. You know what I mean? You can't forget that and keep running up into astrology and trying to run up into um, to the moon and to the Mars and build these cities, you know, that already been built for trillions of years. We all day. Been. All day, bastard. A lot of this hip stop this one right there if you ain't speaking the science of what dirty saying you can't run to astrology you can't run to them gods up there that have been established for trillions of years you gotta come from the dirt where we from we from the dirt <coughs> this second video real quick all right man i got another call this uh yeah video, man quick clip Shorter than the other one. It's old dirty on the Howard Stern show. I'm not sure of the year, but I would have to assume it's the late nineties. Cause Dirty's looking like Dirty doing what Dirty do. And Howard Stern yeah. asked him uh just random questions and he's chopping it up. This is only thirty some seconds into the interview. He just barely sat down, he just got here. Let's listen to the quick rhetoric. Unique. May I call you Mr. Bastard? Because it's very funny to me. Yeah, I like that. I, uh, did the New York Times write Mr. Bastard? Well, the 1010 Winds was calling him Mr. Bastard. <laughs> well, the New York Times is famous for that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yes. Yeah, let me ask you were, you, were you drunk or high on pot or something when you did this? Oh, no, I'm so always sober. Right. You've been sober now for how long? For how long? For a while. What was that, like six months? Uh, yeah. Is that really true? Yeah, um, me, you're um, telling me you're not on anything. No, I'm not. I would have sworn you not were. Not at all. Really? You look really? Like you, not at all. You look like you were chilling with some rum and coke. I no. could have sworn. I see. Last night when that happened, I said, "Whoa, is he high?" <laughs> really? Ooh. Well, um, no, not at all. Um, I only drink water. That's the only thing I drink. Really? Yeah. Because you, you what? You had a drinking problem for a while or something? Uh, well, it wasn't really. It just no. the Indians don't really get too along with the fire water. The Indians don't really get too along with the fire water, and you know. Are right. you an Indian? Yes. Oh, Are right. you an Indian? Yes. Oh really? Oh, I, I thought you were a black guy. Oh really? Oh, I, I thought you were know. a black guy. Hey, you're Indian? Yeah. Oh come on, man. Yeah. You yeah. gotta what be kind kidding of me. Indian? Hey. You're Indian? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, you yeah. got to be kidding me. What kind of Indian are you? Like Tonto Indian? Sh uh, Shinnecock Indian. Really? You're Shinnecock? Yes. Oh, I didn't know you're <laughs> Shinnecock. You yeah, could have fooled me. That's the kind I am. <laughs> hey. So basically, whatever Dirty did, this might have been the night after he wilded out and said, uh, oh, Dirty for the babies, got on stage. Whatever he did, they just thought he was some high nigga doing some shit. And he like, no, yeah. I don't even drink. <clears throat> don't fuck with that shit. Why? <clears throat> Which... Most black people don't drink, because most black people who drink, it fuck them up, and it fuck them up quick. Every single one I've ever known that drank, drank, I've known niggas who survived longer doing fucking heroin than black drunks, for real alcoholic motherfuckers. But, Shinnecock Indian. Every single Shinnecock Indian you look up is either light-skinned to mulatto to caramel-color American. They look nothing like the traditional Indian that you've seen. 
So we know for a fact. The man saying his lineage is what it is. Let's trust. The old dirty bastard is a Shinnecock Indian, as he said. And as we know, they don't get along with that fire water. No, they don't. Now, we ended up where we at now. Because of that fire water. That's a dope headdress made out of maize. Man, that is sick with it, boy. I was just checking that motherfucker out. Yeah. That's what I was just looking at. So as we know, there is a 100% attack on the original black man of America, the descendant of the slave and the slave master. This case coming up in the news in 2018, yo, Wu-Tang was investigated by the police. Well, in actuality, ODB was investigated. As we know, any black man through the entertainment lane who ends up going against the grain and tries to give people knowledge itself always becomes a threat and is the number one threat to American security. That's a quote by the, uh, what's his name? I forget his name because I hate him so much. Hoover. Hmm, yeah, quote Larry. Hoover. The rise of I mean, America they, is sorry. The one threat to the nation's stability and security. Oh, Hoover. This is the first uh, page. I guess this is when it started. This is August 4th, 99. But I noticed in the corner of this page, there's a little thing in quotations that says January 26, 98. So I don't know if it began the first ideas of January and then in August of the year after they started to actually engage the investigation. Right. But I would assume this little tag at the top tells us they started investigating for real and at least thinking about it in 98. Details. Information was received from the NYPD about criminal activity being taken amongst the Wu-Tang Clan WTC organization. Wu-Tang Clan is a group of people signed to a professional major record label that's been distributing albums all over the planet. And they're referred to in the first lines of this affidavit as the Wu-Tang Clan Organization. <laughs> the detectives have documented in their case files that the WTC is heavily involved in the sale of drugs, illegal guns, weapon possession, murder, carjacking, and other types of violent crime. According to information received from the detectives, from who knows where, the WTC was started in 1993 and was funded by... Mm, it stops right there. As far as the funded by part, all of that is redacted. Hmm. So, they give little details here telling us what this page is, but I can read. Next page they give us is from the same day, and it says another aspect discussed by the detectives was that the shooting of a car and carjacking occurred on Staten Island by an associate of Wu Tang Clan. Such and such attempted to rob such and such during a drug deal for Angel Dust. Such and such shot such and such twice and stole his car during the drug deal going bad. Such and such survived his wounds and he and such and such identified the shooter as such and such, <laughs> who's also a suspect and is involved in an unsolved homicide which was supposedly ordered by the Wu Tang Clan. Intelligence indicates that a bunch of blanked out shit in the area happened and detectives have reliable information as to the exact whereabouts of this shooter. So basically, so far, we got a bunch of redacted information that led detectives to go forward with federal charges and a RICO prosecution. Those familiar with what's going on with the Treyway understand that RICO prosecution usually involves any and all parties involved, no matter how large or small. So they're trying to get everybody. Yeah. So far, we see the information based off substantial testimony from who knows. Let's fast forward two months to August. August 5th, SA. If you don't know what SA is, that's senior agent. Such and such spoke with senior agent such and such. So we have two agents now talking to each other. He advised them that he would be traveling to Allentown. Pennsylvania to provide and compare information relating to the drug business of the Blood Street Gang of the Wu-Tang Clan. If you want to go into our uh, take on the Blood Gang and the New York area, we have another video that uh, we released a while back. Uh, <laughs> I might have to re-release it. I think it's there still. I don't think it got banned, but I'll go check. <laughs> 
But uh, basically, um, yeah, man, it's a bunch of fuckery. It's a bunch of fuckery and nonsense. <clears throat> this is actually twenty years ago. This ain't ten years ago. This is twenty years ago. Hmm. Now we go to April of the next year. If you notice, every single one of these investigations started on the fifth. We got fifth or fourth, August fourth, then we got October fifth, then we got April fifth. Russell T. Jones, aka Old Dirty Bastard, Wu Tang Clan. Again, they go more and more into the Wu Tang Clan, but it's funny that they say it is primarily made up of the above case captioned individuals who are more widely known by their street names in the music industry. Not their surnames, not their aliases, not their stage name. Man, white people something else, man. Not that she did. So I white mean, people, white people are motherfuckers, man. Name. That's the whole Wu-Tang Clan names right underneath Old Dirty's names. For some reason, it's scratched out like they don't just tell us whose names were on the page. But that's silly. Silly, silly, silly shit. White people are wild, bro. Uh, there's another thing here that says some guys were offered rap music contracts um, to, let's see, they were also offered real estate and other stuff. Some of the business entities, now here's the real reason why these guys were being investigated, here's the real reason why they were threats. Some of the businesses or entities controlled by the Wu-Tang Clan. Key word in that paragraph is some of the businesses or entities controlled by the Wu-Tang Clan. So aside from the little bullshit music that they selling, Wu-Tang Incorporated out of Perrinville, New Jersey. Wu-Tang Management. Wu-Tang Productions. Wu-Tang Records. Wu-Tang Manufacturing. Wu-Ware Incorporated. Not once, not twice, Three different offices for Wu Wear Incorporated, a clothing company that sold millions of dollars in street merchandise. They claim it was called Urban Wear. <laughs> they controlled that 100%, or at least they controlled enough of it to deem it viable enough to have three offices solely running Wu Wear, the company. They have more Wu Wear offices than they do production, management, or record company offices. Threat. Another page shows that they have, oh, I'm sorry, a fourth Wu-Wear office. So they had a Wu-Wear office in Georgia, they had two in New York, and one in Virginia. But they only had one record office, one production, and one management office for Wu-Tang. They also had MHPG Incorporated out of Maryland. Wise Guy Records out of Ohio, Steel Valley Records out of Ohio, Protect Your Neck Productions, Wu-Tang Publishing, Everglow Incorporated. If you don't remember, I believe Everglow was a drink, right? I think that was. Everglow was a drink that popped off for a hot minute during that time where all the drinks was kind of neon, like Hypnotic and Nouveau and all that shit. Everglow was that mm. shit. I remember that. They also had Diggs Leasing Company, which was their real estate holding. And because of the fact that these individuals own 16 legitimized, functioning, running, and profitable businesses across the eastern seaboard, <laughs> the U.S. Attorney's Office of Eastern District, New York, decided yeah. that we are going to send the forfeiture unit to get involved in this case because best believe they're going to assign the task of identifying the flow of monies through the assets and entities controlled by the Wu-Tang Clan and will work in conjunction with the FAST unit. The they FAST unit. They business to make sure these dudes were doing illegal activities. Made it they business all because... The pop. Make sure people like it. They keep playing that same song. The same song... Put black people on game. We want to slowly try to subtly try to hint on game. This is before social media. This is before you can get a word out at the snap of a button. They was trying to do the Wu Tang bad and couldn't tie nothing to them. So let's see what ended up happening. 
Despite a nearly year-long effort by these attorneys, prosecutors, and officers of the law to reopen these investigations into the alleged role Wu-Tang, RZA, and Raekwon had in murders, federal judge Eric Vitaliano rejected these appeals. Last July, which would have been 2014, some guy named Anthony Christian was sentenced to life in prison for murder and other charges. The fact that his name is brought up is because Anthony Christian is referenced in the FBI's five-year and five year investigation into the Wu-Tang Clan. One snitch, one person trying to get out of murders can bring down 16 legitimate businesses, and it almost did. But, what was the results of that? What happened to the Wu-Tang Clan after something like this happened? After they have to spend finances and money on lawyers to cover their ass. They got clear. But what is the lesson here? Because you go back three years later, and the same person who was investigating them, I'm sure, from 99 to 2004, they taking pictures with in the back room of a TV show. When you see the clan, you don't see everybody. You see a dude here, a dude there. You don't ever see Jizza with meth. You don't ever see Inspector Deck with meth. If you forgot, Rizza made this comment a couple years ago. You know, some of the brothers who are being brutalized by the police, you know what I mean? You also got to have this them take a look at nigga. us, take a look in the mirror at the image we portray. Yeah. If, 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 if you think, if, 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 if I'm a cop and every time I see a young black youth, whether I watch them on TV, movies, or just see them hanging out and they, they looking, they're not looking, you know, it's properly nigga. dressed properly uh, refined, you know, carrying themselves, conducting themselves the proper hours of the day, things that, that a man does, you know what I mean? You're not, you're going to have a certain kind of fear and stereotype of them. Uh, and that's, you know, I tell my sons, I'm like, Yo, some, you know, I say, if you're going somewhere, you don't have to wear a hoodie and, you know, you know, you know, we live in New York, so hoodies and all that is all good, but sometimes, button up your shirt, you know, clean up, look like a, look like a young man, you you're not a little nigga. kid, you know what I mean? So, I think that's another big issue we got to pay attention to. I say that the Wu-Tang Clan had four dedicated offices dedicated to a brand known as Wu-Wear. In Georgia, two in New York, and one in Virginia. Four dedicated offices to Wu-Wear. What does it say again? Brutalized by the police, you know what I mean? You also got to... Have this them take a look bitch, at nigga. us, take a look in the mirror at the image we portray. Yeah. If, 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 if you think, if, 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 if I'm a cop and every time I see a young black youth, whether I watch them on TV, movies, or just see them hanging out and they, they looking, they're not looking, you know, it's properly nigga. dressed, properly uh, refined, you know, carrying themselves, conducting themselves the proper hours of the day, things that, that a man does, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not. You're gonna have a certain kind of fear and stereotype of them, uh, and that's. You know, I tell my sons, I'm like, yo, some, you know, I say, if you're going somewhere, you don't have to wear a hoodie, and you know, you know, you know, we live in New York, so hoodies and all that is all good. But sometimes, button up your mm. shirt, you know, clean up, hoodie. look like a look like a young man. You you're not a little nigga. kid, you know what I mean? So dedicated to selling this shit to people and then they turn around buy it wear it get murdered by police for fitting a stereotype and then the man who makes it and sells it to you tells you that you shouldn't dress like that yeah this nigga rizzo i seen this interview when he came out that rizzo interview yeah a lot of people forgot about that one nah i ain't forget about shit he cooned it up on that interview yeah but, but, he's you, know, but you know money. but you know he Hey, he's in Hollywood. He's dealing with the monkeys, Quentin Tarantino and all of them. You know, they took him up on this wing. And, yeah, nigga, you dance for us. We got you. You know, I want you to give me endless scores on all my movies. 
endless musical scores, and then I'll put you in a few of them, and you know, I don't know. yeah, yeah. If you do the score on this movie, I'll let you be in. Crazy. <laughs> Man with the iron fist. But that's what's going on with the Wu. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what history. was going on. With the yeah, movie. that's what was and possibly yeah, what uh, is still going yeah, on. Yeah, man, that is like 2014, 2015, yeah, I, I went a little deeper into the goings on with Method Man lately, man. I've seen that him and this lady have this uh, kind of management company. It seems like they're managing themselves in some type of indirect way. But uh, I don't want to go into all that right now because it's weird. Method Man looking real weird on these TV shows. Like, he's all refined and everything. And it's odd because he still won't turn around and try to rap. Mm. It's kind of like when LL was having his transition, but he was still trying to come out singing Who Do You Love? And it was like, mm, not right. Not no more, dog. Not it's kind of like, oh, yeah, he used to do that. That was <laughs> you, huh? At one time. That ain't you. Oh, yeah, he did used to rap. That ain't you. Yeah, before, you know, dog. Just leave the yeah. stage alone, man. Because uh, I don't think the stage is for meth no more, bro. I think he's pretty set acting. Keeping it real on TV shows such as uh, Ballers. I believe he's on Ballers. So check out Method Man on Ballers. Uh, check out Method Man on uh, Netflix somewhere. Just Google him. He, he has made a ton of features and show sightings. Method Man is one of the best actors currently in the game. Oh! Stay off the stage, man. Man. Actually, actually, stay on it. <laughs> stay on the stage. Stay on the stage, kid. Stay on the stage. Not the crowd. Yeah, don't look. My nigga, man, my nigga busted shit and all of that. Nigga, he, yeah, he trying to play it out. I hope he is, cause I want to see that nigga do. I want to see that nigga do that shit in Omaha. Yeah. Hey, it ain't nothing but a bunch of hunkies up there, so I'm pretty sure yeah, it's going to go down like can, that. Bro, and don't catch them. Hey, it's just, you know, it's a bunch Have of white folks ready. up there. Have your phone ready. I'm pretty sure they're going to catch them. Hey, man, Wu-Tang is, is a big deal in Omaha, Jack. You better believe that. It's a big deal everywhere. If I wear my... Yeah, they yeah, yeah. Wu-Tang sweat yeah, they're big deal. in public, I can make friends. But the thing is, they more of a big deal with the white community. That's, that's why I said I can make friends. Yeah, I'm man. Sure. Yeah. And since Omaha is like a whiter city, yeah, man, they're a super big deal here, but it's going to be pandemonium. You know? It's going to be chaotic. Like, like Wu Tang's like, first album and last album. They don't listen to none of the music in between. Nah. I don't hear them off, you know, only made for Cuban Links or Iron Man. That's it. <laughs> strictly, they strictly protect your neck and triumph. That's it. They don't touch that other shit. It. We're on no shit else, nigga. Fuck all that other shit. That <laughs> other shit was just a bunch of shit y'all did when y'all was bored. Exactly. <laughs> they can't rap the other songs, man. Don't work. Nah. We just sitting by by our head. But Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. And, uh, yeah, man. Come back and talk about some cloning. Greatest rap group of all time. We got people. Yeah. You ain't got enough. Uh, enough. Uh, Bottom line. 